Hi YouTube, Envious Customs here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to get set up and running in FE Live. FE Live is another diagnostic software similar to that of Tuna Pro, although FE Live is a little bit older and it's no longer supported by its developers, uh, meaning that it comes as is with any bugs or any issues that it really has. But for our purposes, it works well, it allows us to see some uh, engine data and also some DTC information. You can grab a free evaluation license from their website. Uh, as you can see, it expires in 1,830 days, and even if those days do run out, they will pop up another evaluation license to be put in. So first off, we're going to want to connect up our cable. So I'm going to plug in a brand new AODO cable right now. Alright, that plugged in. I didn't even see an installation file then, so it must have installed straight away. Uh, for you, you might have seen a little installation uh, Windows installation box saying installing new device, and then once it's done, it would have said, COM6, COM8, COM20, it would have been some value there. If you missed it, that's okay. You just need to go ahead and open up Device Manager. So I'm just going to go into here, under Ports, and you'll then see USB Serial Port. This is my this is my AODO cable. As you can see, it's connected to COM2. This is important to keep note of, especially in FU Live, as FU Live will only connect to cables between 1 and 8. So if it's a value that's larger than 8, you're going to have to put it back down between 1 and 8. So if it's 20, or 66 or some other value, you need to right click on it, go to properties, port settings, advanced, and so under COM port number, you need to change this between our value between 1 and COM 8. So as you can see, I have other, other things that are actually using these COM ports. They're actually other AODO cables, so I could technically use one of them, but I do advise not doing that and trying to use one that's not in use. So I'm just going to stick with COM2 as I know that's working. Since I don't need to change it, I'm just going to cancel out, but you need to click OK. And then I'm just going to click OK here. So that's that done. So we have our cable installed and ready to be used. So now we need to set it up in the software. As you can see here, the software tried to open up COM1. COM1, we it's not connected to anything. It's just the by default, and it's obviously it's going to error out. So now let's get that connected up. Let's go to this little hand pointing towards uh, the little sheet. So we want to click on comms, uh, where it has ports, I need to select com2, you know it was on it. You might have to select 5, 4, whatever you've connected to, so I'm going to click com2, yep, and then click OK. So it says ready, opening com2, so that's that done, it's now opened, com2, no error, and so that's working. So next we have to do is have to select the uh, vehicle that we're going to connect to. So I need to click on this little folder in the car, so I'm currently in a VY V6 Commodore. So I want to go to General Motors VY V6. Yep, open. All right, opened. It hasn't had an issue. I then need to click on Macros, and I want to click on Engine Data and DTCs. So what a macro is, it's actually the function that's run. So it's the task that gets run as soon as I click Start up here. So if you wanted to clear the trouble codes, once you're connected and started, I'd, uh, you can click on that, and then it will just it will send the uh, clear commands. If you want to view just engine data, you would click on that. If you want to see engine data and diagnostic trouble codes, you click on this one. So if, since that's what I want to see right now, I want to see trouble codes and engine data, I click on that one. Now before we do anything else now, before we actually click start, I need to connect my cable to my OBD2 port underneath the steering wheel between your feet. Alright, I've just connected up. Next, I'm going to turn my key on. No emission on. Now you don't need to start your car uh, before you start logging. I generally start my logging before I start my car. But this time around I'm just going to show you so we get live data straight away. I'm going to start my car and then I'll start the logging process. Alright, so my car has just started and it's just idling in park. So now make sure I click on engine on DTCs. And so go up here to the little green circle, it says start AOD. And that's where you want to click. You just want to click on that one. Alright, there we go. Starting macro engine data, synchronizing our deal communication, and waiting for this. Alright, so now it's it's logging data. So now let's go over to my dashboard. There you go, you can see some live engine data. Just at my, my idle speed. I'm obviously not moving. You can see some other bits and pieces. If you couldn't just hear then, there was a little chime that went off, my engine data chime, uh, engine uh, check engine chime. That is completely normal to occur. Also occurs in Tuna Pro. Now this happens how the software communicates with the vehicle. 
it, it sends lots of messages uh, to communicate with the ECU and get all this diagnostic data. But as you can see, my car is idling fine. It's, nothing's going erratic. It is working. You can drive normally around. That little chime just goes off due to how the software communicates. It's not, it's not breaking your vehicle. But as you can see, it gives us all, all our sort of data, our little DTCs to check if anything's going off, anything's a problem. Uh, but it's, it's all basic sort of uh, information and stuff. I prefer Tuna Pro, but this is also good software for people that just want to get used to logging in and getting set up. And it's a lot more easier than uh, setting up a Tuna Pro, even though there's only a few more steps. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to post below. Uh, remember to, to subscribe. And I'll see you later.